Among the most notable documents in Newton's collection are those titled Artifius His Secret Book and the Epistle of Ion Pontanus. These documents comprise a compilation of excerpts from another work called Nicholas Flamel, his exposition of the hieroglyphical figures, which he commissioned to be painted on an arch in St. Innocent's Churchyard in Paris. Alongside the secret book of Artefius and the epistle of Ion Pontanus, this work encompasses both the theoretical and practical aspects of the philosopher's stone. Newton may have also referred to the Latin version of this text found within Lazarus Zetzner's Theatrum Chemicum, a volume frequently linked to the Turba Philosophorum and other early European alchemical manuscripts. Nicolas Flamel, one of the subjects in the aforementioned work, was an enigmatic figure often associated with the discovery of the philosopher's stone, hieroglyphical figures, early forms of tarot, and occultism. Artifius and his secret book also piqued the interest of 17th-century alchemists. In the 1936 auction of Newton's collection was the epitome of the treasure of health, written by Edwardus Generosus Anglicus Innominate, who lived in 1562 AD. This 28-page treatise delves into the philosopher's stone, the animal or angelical stone, the prospective stone, also known as the magical stone of Moses, and the vegetable or growing stone. Newton's various surviving alchemical notebooks clearly show that he made no distinctions between alchemy and what we today consider science. On the very same pages in which we find the recordings of his legendary optics experiments, we also find various recipes culled from arcane sources. William R. Newman, a scholar of the history of science who has collected many of Newton's alchemical manuscripts, writes, Alongside sober explanations of optical and physical phenomena, such as freezing and boiling, we find Neptune's trident, Mercury's caducean rod, and the green lion, all symbolizing alchemical substances. There are also clear connections between Newton's alchemical pursuits and his work in physics and mathematics. His alchemical understanding of matter and forces informed his development of the laws of motion and universal gravitation. Additionally, his alchemical experiments may have inspired the development of calculus as he sought mathematical tools to model and analyze the complex transformations he observed in the laboratory. The relationship between Newton's alchemical studies and his scientific achievements has been a subject of debate among scholars. Some argue that his alchemical pursuits were a distraction from his more legitimate scientific work, while others maintain that these interests were essential to his overall intellectual development and contributed significantly to his groundbreaking discoveries. Due to the threat of punishment and the potential scrutiny he feared from his peers within the scientific community, Newton may have deliberately left his work on alchemical subjects unpublished. Newton was well known for being highly sensitive to criticism, such as the numerous instances when he was criticized by Robert Hooke, and his admitted reluctance to publish any substantial information regarding calculus before 1693. A perfectionist by nature, Newton also refrained from the publication of material that he felt was incomplete, as evident from a 38-year gap between Newton's conception of calculus in 1666 and its final full publication in 1704, which would ultimately lead to the infamous Leibniz-Newton calculus controversy. Newton's Biblical Studies Sir Isaac Newton devoted significant time and effort to the study of the Temple of Solomon, dedicating an entire chapter of his work, The Chronology of Ancient Kingdoms Amended, to his findings on this magnificent structure. To gather information about the temple, Newton primarily relied on the Book of Kings, translating the descriptions from Hebrew to English using dictionaries, as his knowledge of the Hebrew language was limited. Besides scripture, Newton turned to a variety of ancient and contemporary sources to enrich his understanding of the temple. He held the belief that many ancient sources possessed sacred wisdom and that the proportions and design of their temples held intrinsic spiritual significance. This conviction led Newton to explore architectural masterpieces from Hellenistic Greece and Roman sources such as Vitruvius in pursuit of their hidden occult knowledge. This concept, often referred to as Prisca Sapientia or sacred wisdom, as well as the ancient wisdom revealed to Adam and Moses directly by God, was widely accepted among scholars of Newton's time. As a Bible scholar, Newton initially focused on the sacred geometry of Solomon's temple, including golden sections, conic sections, spirals, orthographic projection, and other harmonious constructions. 
However, he also believed that the dimensions and proportions of the temple held a deeper meaning. He posited that the measurements provided in the Bible were mathematical puzzles waiting to be solved. To Newton, the temple's design was a result of King Solomon's enlightened vision and divine guidance. The geometry of the temple, in Newton's eyes, symbolized more than just a mathematical blueprint. It also offered a chronological framework for Hebrew history. This perspective prompted him to incorporate a chapter on the temple in the chronology of ancient kingdoms amended, even though it may initially appear unrelated to the book's overarching historical focus. Newton was convinced that the writings of ancient philosophers, scholars, and biblical figures concealed sacred wisdom and that their architecture held similar secrets. He theorized that these individuals had embedded their knowledge within a complex code of symbolic and mathematical language which, when decoded, would unveil a deeper understanding of the natural world. Furthermore, Newton dedicated a significant portion of his life to the pursuit and revelation of what could be regarded as a Bible code. He placed particular emphasis on interpreting the Book of Revelation, producing extensive writings and several manuscripts that detailed his insights and interpretations. 